Hey guys, this is Emily Lopez and today I am going to show you how to install an uncoupling membrane on your floor before you uh, install your tile. Now, there are several types of uncoupling membrane. There's things that there's some that focus more on a vapor barrier versus um, crack isolation. There's a lot of different brands of uncoupling membrane. Today I am using Redguard simply because that is what is in stock at my Home Depot and is available to me without having to order it and wait for it. So um, if you are not familiar with an uncoupling membrane, what it is is a piece of material and it's almost like two layers together where one's kind of a plastic side and one's a felt side. And there are two pieces of almost plastic and fabric attached together or two pieces of material, different uh, mediums, that they can move independent of each other. So you have all probably seen a builder install tile directly on the floor, the concrete floor of a basement. And um, I don't know about every climate, but in my climate, concrete cracks. It just does. And the thing with concrete is it has a lot of moisture in it. That's how we mix it, right? And as the soils and the temperatures change, concrete heaves and cracks. And in my area, even really new construction, there's just a lot of cracks in basement floors. And so the problem is when the concrete cracks, if your tile is laid directly on it, then your tile can also crack because if the concrete and the tile are here right flat to each other, perfect, perfect bond and this bottom piece cracks, it's gonna transfer that crack to the upper piece. So what the membrane does is it uncouples and it absorbs some of the shock of that movement. So as it gets hotter, as it gets colder, as there's movement in your concrete, um, also it helps with vapor. So if you are in a climate that changes with moisture in your soils, it's also gonna prevent that vapor from leaching up and creating problems with your tiling and, and disjointing things. When you walk through a house and you see cracked tile, yeah, of course you can drop a bowling ball on your tile and it can break. But most of the time when you see a lot of cracking in tile, it's because it was not installed properly. So if you do not have a proper surface below your tile and it's not supported appropriately, you're not gonna have a long lasting install. So that's why an uncoupling membrane is important to installing tile. Now I'm gonna show you how to install it. Let's get started. So I wanna show you a close up view just so you can kind of get an idea of what I was describing. So this is the side of my, this is my uncoupling membrane. It comes in a roll and it's got the two different materials. And this one actually looks like it has three. So it looks like it has felt. It looks like in the middle, it has this kind of plastic material. And then on this side, it has felt. And then it's also got this kind of textured ribbing to it. I've seen some with like a square honeycomb pattern. This one has round dots in it. Um, they're all a little bit different. I'm sure they trade, uh, you know, copyright or whatever the word would be for their method that they use but see how it separates so you have that layer and that layer and that layer this is a piece where it's kind of broken off so I'll, I'll trim that before I use it um, but this can move independent of that so if this piece if one side goes to the floor to your concrete or what you're starting as your surface and then the other piece goes to your tile then those that top layer and that bottom layer they can shift independent of each other so just so you can kind of get a profile view of what i'm talking about to get a little bit better idea now the first thing i recommend that you do before you start mixing any of your mortar to install your uncoupling membrane is to measure out all your pieces and get them pre-cut because you don't want your mortar to set up and get too dry to where you don't get a good bond. So first step is to start rolling this out, figuring out how you're gonna piece it. You wanna have as few joints as possible um, because you just don't want a lot of extra joints if you're trying to use it as waterproofing. Um, you have strips you put between your pieces and why do you want a bunch of you know scrap pieces, puzzle piece together? So try to lay it out in a way that there's as few cuts as possible um, and get your pieces measured out and pre-cut before we move on to the next step. I just got done um, measuring out and cutting all of the pieces that are gonna go on my floor. I have now removed them. I didn't say in the first video, I wanna remind you guys, you have to make sure that the substrate that you're attaching to is super, super clean. So sweep it, vacuum it, get any weird chunks of texture or anything scraped off so you have a good level surface and a good clean surface 
to start with and to bond to. Make sure for your uncoupling membrane, you read your manufacturer's specifications about what type of mortar to use to bond it to the floor and then about what type of floors you can attach to because there's certain things it can bond to and certain things that it can't. So keep that in mind and make sure that you read the instructions and the specs before you get started and you have everything ready that you need. So I am using polymer modified thin set because that is what my specifications are for this uncoupling membrane. So make sure you read your specifications, but we're going to do a, poly a polymer, modif polymer modified thin set to attach with. And um, I, one note here I want to give you guys is when it says thin set, you need to use thin set. There are so many pre-mixed adhesives in the store and adhesive is not a thin set. You can use an adhesive for like a backsplash, for a cute little accent wall, but when you're working with um, waterproofed areas, bathrooms, um, adhesive is not the same thing. So if it says a thin set, use thin set and use the right type. So I'm gonna get that mixed up and then we'll go on to the next step. I have my thin set mixed, I have my pieces pre-cut, so I'm gonna just pour the thin set over the floor out of my bucket and then I'm gonna trowel it out with the size of trowel that I prefer to use for this. Your manufacturer will have specifications on their recommendation um, on your instructions. So I'm gonna start pouring out mortar. So you want to make sure you're getting really good adhesion between your mat and the floor um, with the thin set. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking something large and flat and I'm just going all around, especially on the corners, and I'm making sure I'm getting a really, really good connection. And I'm going to slide my, um, this is a concrete tool, but I think it gives me a good connection. I'm going to slide this all around quite a bit. Um, just to get a real nice connection. Now you want to be careful. I'm noticing right here where my knees were at. I'm making um, divots. The instructions say to put like um, boards under you so you don't do that. So I'm going to grab something to put under me that spreads out my surface area a little bit as I, as I do this. Okay, just to show you guys, I have a piece of really rigid insulation right here I'm standing on. You can use a spread out board, um, but I wasn't doing this before and I was noticing it was making divots. I saw on the instructions and thought, oh, I'll be all right, I've done this before and didn't have that problem. Maybe my um, mortar was thicker. So make sure you have something as you're working on top of the medium that you are not just putting knee prints and footprints and you know from where you're putting the pressure down. So this is what I have as I'm moving through. I'm smoothing everything down really good. I'm gonna start to put my mortar down back there and I'm gonna go ahead and attach that piece. Here's where we're at now, I have everything in. Now, these are my joint lines right here. If you were trying to use this as a waterproofing membrane and you were really worried about waterproofing properties, they have a strip that you can mortar over that. So um, I'm not super worried about that here being over concrete, but that is a product if you were doing this over some sort of wood or something like that. Um, so one thing I've noticed with Red Guard is because it comes in a roll, that roll doesn't like to lay flat and I sometimes have an edge issue with edges coming up. So of course I wanna embed those really well but I put something not super heavy because you don't want to divot, but I put something with a little bit of weight on the places that I feel like there's an issue with them riding up. So that's why this looks so silly right now. Um, I've been told that the Schluter products do not have as big of an issue with rolling on the edges. Um, I have not ever used a Schluter uncoupling membrane. I just haven't had access to it. I live in a pretty small town. So um, that is just word for thought from other people I've talked to. And that's why it looks that silly for me right now. Um, but I'm done for the night. I'm going to let this set up and then I'm going to come back and start laying tile another day. Now it does look like on their specs, they say you can go ahead and lay tile directly over this um, without it setting up. However, for me, I don't want to have to worry about moving this little piece that I'm trying to kneel on so I don't make divots and stuff. I feel more comfortable letting it set up before I come back and, um, and tile. So that's what I do when I use the product. If you made it this far, Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I super appreciate you guys. I am up to 100 subscribers on YouTube, so I'm super excited. If you aren't subscribed, please click that subscribe button below. Um, please like this video, please share it with your friends, and um, I hope this was helpful and you're ready to use an uncoupling membrane yourself on your bathroom floor or maybe your kitchen or wherever you need it. So have a beautiful day, see ya.